Well, we're joined oh, now by two of its stars, Lee Ingleby and uh, Morvin Christie. And welcome both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, mum and Dad, um, da Dad Paul and Mum Alison. Um, you must have been quite gratified, I would have thought, by the response from parents who have autistic children, because it's a big responsibility to do a drama like this, isn't it? Yeah, it was, I mean, I, when, when you hear people that have been, you know, been in that situation saying, you know, that it's very similar to, to their experiences and, and, you know, how real it is, I think, is mm. it, it, it's, it's really humbling to hear, I think. Well, it follows the story of five-year-old Joe and his recent diagnosis with autism, but it's, it's not just about him because it's actually how the impact it has on the rest of the, the family, family yeah. and individually how their relationships change because of this. And, and more than her, your character, Alison, she, she comes across as very fearsome sometimes, but you can really see the sort of frustration that's going through her as well. Yeah, I think she's... It's interesting because I think the depiction of mums on telly has traditionally been quite you know nice and angelic and kind of and actually she's really struggling with this she's fighting against it and she's also very much her father's daughter and yes. her father is quite a forthright creature so she's yeah she's just um she she meets the diagnosis with denial and she thinks that she can solve it so she just goes at that well, she's like a tiger really isn't she she's a yeah. protective tiger yeah, at, yeah at the expense of absolutely everything let's concentrate on this particular issue i think so i think it's a completely instinctive almost kind of animalistic response mm -hmm. i think she's absolutely not thinking really in the moment she's just the reacting. clip we saw there the birthday party mm -hmm. that was really the breaking that was in episode one so that yeah. was the the, the the breaking point because the, it was after that you suddenly realize hang on a second this is not right there's something not right here that's when they got their mm. diagnosis well they get it they get it pointed out don't they by yeah by the brother and, and they've already been going through a process yeah. for a couple of years with hearing tests and various kind of stages of of process before it gets kind of bombed and they react in a very different way yeah. because they do. They do. dad paul uh, he, his is a different response it is that i mean like i said because alison is very sort of she's almost got the blinkers on and you know it's, it's one of wanting to sort of protect and and she doesn't want him labeled and anybody to know and i think paul's more of a you know he's going well we let people know let the school know let everybody know and then we can deal with it yeah. and sometimes misplaced but, yeah uh, but definitely looks at it with a that lighter lighter view absolutely yeah i think he has that you know he uses humor as a defense mechanism which is brought up in the third episode when mm. they get a, a speech and language therapist to come in to pretty much highlight the <laughs> and what's going on i like the fact that there is a major communication problem yeah, that's it, yeah. 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 and of course wow. the he that we're talking about is joe who's played by max vento i think he's six now but he was five six. when he was doing it um what what an extraordinary young mm. I don't actor. know Beans Max, oh, yeah, isn't he? Yeah, he's a proper live wire. So um but yeah, he just understood that Joe is quieter, Joe's removed, Joe doesn't engage, Joe's There's quite of a bit of cleverness when it comes to a five year old to do that. I mean I've got a six year old and I don't think I could talk to him in a way to make him un the moments when I need him to be quiet and he doesn't. So and I don't know we, how... We, we don't, went an awful lot of time where we spent time. Did you? Time. And in between yeah. takes, we, we, we try and play. But I mean, also you left the cameras rolling so that... Yes. Uh, so if you r roll and roll and roll and roll, eventually mm. uh, Max is going to get bored. Yes. And a lot of the and stuff that, that you've used... And that's on screen. Yeah, yes. it does. Because, I mean, a lot of the time, we'd, you know, he'd, he'd want to play around and sort of interact and we're trying to <laughs> encourage him encourage not, him not to. Yeah. Yeah. He's going yeah. against what he wants to do. Look at the camera. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes the camera's right in his yeah, face, exactly. and, yeah. um, you know. But he, he soon got used to it, didn't he? He, he did. He, he got just... really used to it. He's brilliant at, um, and I think this is rare in a child. He's brilliant at just allowing himself to be there in front of the camera. Like he doesn't constantly feel the need to perform. He's yeah. very comfortable with it just rolling on him. So, yeah, there's quite a lot of shots of him where it's just been rolling for a long time, and he's really bored, and he's kind of scratching his head and sort of rolling his eyes, and that just works brilliantly yeah, for Joe. For the, for the yeah. So, yeah. Well, he's uh, he's remarkable. You guys he's are brilliant. It's yeah. extraordinary. Well done. Thank uh, you. Seriously. Thank you very much indeed. And it's um, uh, the A word is tonight. The next episode at nine on BBC One. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much.